Android O has just been released in preview state and I'm here to show you what's new. Now this is just a developer preview so you can get this new OS if you have a Google or Nexus device and if you manually flash it as it's not part of the Android beta program just yet. Plus it's still very buggy and for now you probably don't want to use this as your daily driver so don't get too disappointed if you can't test this out for yourself. Once you set up your device, it may not seem like much on the home screen except for a new wallpaper and maybe a few minor design tweaks such as the black buttons in the app drawer for the Pixel. But if you scroll down on the notification panel here, you will notice a difference. If you slightly slide a notification to the right or left, you will see a new icon that wasn't there before. This will let you snooze the notification for a certain amount of time and reassert itself after the timer is up. For example, if you receive a message and you want to respond later but don't want the particular notification in your face but you don't want to dismiss it completely as well, you can also have this option to dismiss it for 30 minutes and have it pop up again when the 30 minutes are up. I also enjoy how the icons of the notifiers stack on top of each other when I scroll down the quick settings panel to let you know that there are other ones available and it has a nice animation as well. If you long press on one of them, you will be introduced with notification channels which are new app defined categories for notification content. It basically lets you have fine grained control over different kinds of notifications. You can block or change the behavior of each channel individually rather than managing all of the app's notifications together. In other words, you can still block every notification for an app, but if you just want to block certain notifications for the app and not have it completely muted, you can do so as well. I also wanted to mention that certain quick settings tiles that are expandable now have a line underneath them to differentiate themselves from the non-expandable ones, which are just toggles, and that the Wi-Fi, mobile data, and battery icon all stay in your notification shade at all times now. In my opinion, it does look a bit cluttered in the quick settings panel. Maybe it's spaced out better on the Pixel XL, but I just hope they clean this up a bit in the future. Ambient display wasn't left out either. Double tapping the screen will activate it, but it only shows you the time and some app icons for your notifications. You can tap on those icons twice to turn on the screen, and when you receive a message, such as a Google Hangouts, you will see some green text letting you know that it's a Hangouts message, and from there you can tap on Reply to respond from the lock screen. It does seem like a downgrade, however, since the old layout on Nougat showed mostly notifications info as well as the date and alarms, but it's not the final version, so maybe Google is still working on this, and it's just a bit buggy for now. Another cool feature that we've seen before on other skins is custom lock screen shortcuts. Now you can go into the settings, enable system UI tuner, and choose from a variety of different options. So if you want to launch Chrome, add a new reminder, compose an email, or so much more right from the lock screen, you now have that option. Since I already mentioned the settings, let's hop on over and whoa, everything's changed. It seems like Google is moving to a much more organizational approach, resulting in less scrolling time, and they've completely gotten rid of the slide out menu, which is fine. I doubt anyone used that anyways. I might as well just show you now. The Easter egg on Android O looks like this, but it still has the old Nougat Easter egg, so I guess we'll have to wait for now. You can also customize the navigation bar, such as changing the layout. Options include compact, which squeezes the buttons together, and right-leaning and left-leaning for an ease of one-handed use. There's also extra buttons to add on the side, such as clipboard, which lets you drag and paste text into certain text fields, a keyboard switcher to switch between the keyboards when you're typing, and key code, which I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it does seem like an extra key for the menu, or maybe for developers to implement their own custom actions. There's also a new feature called Picture in Picture Mode, which will allow you to shrink a video down into a floating window so you can do other things on the device. It's sort of like what we've seen in the YouTube app, and it's already available for Android TV, but for now, the feature doesn't seem to be working on any smartphones, so I can't show it off. It also looks like Android is going to natively support themes. In the display settings, there is an option for device theme with only two options, inverted and pixel, and it only shows up on my Google Pixel and not my Nexus 6P also running Android O. It also only themes my notification shade and quick settings panels, so for now, I'm not sure if this will be kept or removed down the line, but it would be really cool to see what third party developers come up with. Anyways, the settings is going to have way more extensive features in the updates to come. The biggest change here is obviously the interface with every cat category having a new layout, especially in the battery and storage sections. Definitely like the direction this is going with a cleaner and simplistic look. I obviously left out quite a few under the hood features such as autofill framework, adaptive icons, wide color gamut profiles, and tons more as most of these features are not available to show off just yet. 
but I'll leave a couple links right below that like button so you can check them out for yourself if you're interested. This is a great start for its first release. Android O is going to put a big priority on improving a user's battery life and the device's interactive performance, as well as some new features and designs we'll be sure to love. I'll definitely make a full review when Android O is in its final stages and when it actually gets a name. Most people are saying Oreo, but looking at Google's naming history for major Android updates, they will definitely shock us all. Anyways, that's it for my first look at Android O. Let me know in the comments what you think it will be called. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe for more Android content, and I will see you guys in the next one. Kapow!